Hi. We're going to talk about Young's modulus today. I had an experiment all planned. Um, some things went wrong. So we'll just talk about it on the board. So Young's modulus. I hope that grows back. Young's modulus is a, a way that we determine uh, a material's response to stress. Uh, so put down Young's modulus here. It's named after Thomas Young. He was a physician and scientist in the late uh, 18th and early 19th century in England. Um, he was uh, credited with uh, translating uh, some of the Rosetta Stone, if you've heard of that. Uh, he did the first uh, two-slit experiment uh, that's on record, which is actually the basis of quantum mechanics, uh, almost 100 years before Max Planck came up with the idea. And he also worked with materials. Young's modulus is given by a big Y. And uh, it's equal to the ratio of stress. And stress is, you know, if I apply a, a force over a certain area to something, I can stress, I can stress this eraser, I can stress it this way, I can bend it. I can twist it, I can stretch it, I can press it. You know, there are other ways of applying the stress, and uh, it's just force per area. Now, I can do all these things to any material, but each material responds different. It strains in different ways, it stretches different amounts. So Young's, Young's modulus is the ratio of stress to strain. Now, in uh, physics, let's see, in mathematics we say y is equal to the stress, and stress is just force per area, right? It matters whether I push like this or push over a small, the same force over a smaller area. And the strain is the change in length as a function, or the, the ratio of the change in length to the total length of the object. You know, if it's, if it's a, a meter long and it's got a 5% change, that's going to be a, a five centimeter stretch or compression or twist, something like that. And the units, well, let's see. Hmm. Change in length over length, no units, right? They all cancel out. And force per area, that's, uh, well, that's pounds per square inch or PSI or uh, Pascals. It, it turns out to be units of pressure. So let's see, we should, uh, we should do an example. Hmm. Let's say, example. Let's say we hang something here. Uh, we hang a, um, a block. And it hangs from a, a line, it's got a certain length. And uh, the block's got a mass of, uh, let's see, let's do the weight. We'll do English units. The block's got a weight of uh, 100 pounds. And let's say this material, and let's say this thing is, um, is 40 feet long. And, uh, and when I hang this from it, when I hang this block from it, the change in length is uh, six inches. Okay. And hmm, what else should I do? Oh, the area of the line. That's the area, right? The force per area. So the area of the line, uh, let's see, it's a... Uh, Maybe it's a tenth of an inch, so it's a tenth of an inch squared would be a hundredth of an inch. So let's say, let's say the area is 0 0.03 square inches. That's the cross-sectional area of this line, because that's what's stretching, right? It's got a length, it's got a cross-sectional area. And I want to know, what's the Young's modulus? Let's see. Young's modulus is force over area, over change in length, over length. 
Now, it, it seems better if we uh, put this in two lines. So I can rewrite that as, let's see, force would be on top, area is on bottom, change in length is on bottom, 1 over 1 over length is length. So that's, a, that's an easier equation to work with. We've got a force of uh, 100 pounds, a total length of 40 feet, an area of 0 0.03 square inches, and a change in length of 6 inches. I want to cancel the feet, so I'll change that. There's 1 foot for 12 inches. That's going to be 0 0.5 feet. 0 0.5 feet. So that's going to be, uh, let's see, eight. that's going to be 8,000 over 0 0.03, which is 2.678 to 3, over 3 to the minus 2. I think it's 2.67 times 10 to the fifth pounds per square inch. 8,000, 8, 8 times 10 to the 3 over 3 times 10 to the minus 2 is 20. Yeah, so. So it better be the Young's modulus for that material. Now, to measure Young's modulus, we need to measure the strain uh, that the object receives. It's hard to figure out, you know, how much. For this, it's easy to see how much it's stretched, because it's a line. You can measure that pretty easily. But what about something like this. It's a solid object and I want to see the stress that it, uh, that it undergoes. And, and the easiest way to measure that is with strain gauges.